Hey, it's Jessica DeMassa with WTF Health. What's the future of health? I'm talking to the who's who of health tech and healthcare innovation. And today I've got one of the who's who'siest of them all, the founder and CEO of Zeus Health, Jonathan Bush. Jonathan, it's great to see you. Hello, Jessica. I'm so <laughs> glad you still do this. Yeah, I'm still here, just like you. I'm so glad That's you right. still do this. <laughs> Others may say, why are they still doing this? But we say, we are so glad so happy to be here. All right, so let's kick this off because the reason you're here is that you, your company, Zeus Health, has just raised more money. So adding $40 million in a Series B to those coffers, bringing your total raised up to $74 million. Tell me about this fundraise. Was this like a particularly easy thing to do at a time like this? How did this yeah, go it was down? Like as, it was as easy as chopping down a redwood tree with a sewing needle. It was so easy. No, it was it so was. It was an it was a great experience. I'm, I'm starting to really start to have a, a masochistic adoration of really painful experiences in my healthcare life. But but uh, we were we were we you know we I had a good you know return for shareholders at Athena Health back in the day, and so there was a lot of interest in you know at a time in, in 2021 and 2020 when there was so much money and so much. Uh, sort of flagrant optimism about everything uh, that that we had like a line around the block to do the founding round. The seed round of Zeus was, you know, $34 million. And almost immediately after we closed it, people were saying, hey, could I be in the A? You know, could I be in the, could we? And so I immediately developed enormous hubris and said, well, you know, I'll let you in. Uh, I'll, you can line up and I'll pick, you know, which of you will be allowed in for 400 million pre-money? And if you don't want to pay me 400, go away now. Don't even look at my data room, you know, because I'm the prince, et cetera. And, uh, and so we, we lined them all up and they met, we made them wait until June. And they all came through in June and nobody made us an offer. And I was like, oh, uh, maybe 300, maybe 200, maybe, maybe what, maybe, what do you think? <laughs> And so by the okay. end of the summer, we had we had crickets, and uh, we started again, and uh, and we we dusted off our appropriate humble entrepreneurial selves and began to kiss frogs, one after another after another another. You know they didn't most of them didn't turn into princes, but some of them turned into you know nice little dukes, and you know they were helpful this way or they'd be willing to follow but not lead or. Uh, and uh, and then by the by, by January we had a term sheet, and then by February we, we were able to close. But it was a very long and hard, and ended up a down round. I mean, it was the same pre money as the first round, but we had you know put money on, so dilutive. Uh, but so what? We get to do this incredible project uh, at a time when the need is real. The great thing about doing these kinds of things is they're they're harder to do when everybody's got hubris. And they're easier to do when everybody's kind of screwed. Uh, when people are really feeling financial pressure, like, shit, you mean I can eliminate that cost? Sure, try, here, help me. So I'm thrilled to be one of the few that, you know, has now a full coffer, uh, the ability to really invest, uh, because I think lots and lots and lots of providers are going to want to stop duplicating the creation of a patient baseline, you know, getting up to speed on a patient costs 30 bucks. 40 bucks, depending on your specialty. And it's just dumb. It's bloated. It's annoying to the patient. It's annoying to you. So I'm really excited and really relieved that we have it closed and then excited about what we're going to be able to do with it. All right, let's talk about that, because one of the things that struck me when I was reading the release about the funding is that it seems like the value proposition has changed here. So when you guys launched, it was like the way I understood it, like this build a bear kind of, you know, tech stack like drawer that, that startups could go through, pick yep. out the CRM they needed, the EMR integration they needed, the patient yep. interface they needed and, you know, build their own thing. And oh, by the way, if you want to land your data in this patient record in the background, like all the other startups that you know are, are going to be our clients well you can turn that on or you can turn that off now it sounds sure like our wtf health as our pitch that's exactly I what it was i simplify that's what it was but now what it sounds like to me i'm reading this stuff and it's like it sounds like this this single patient record at the point of care is the thing that you're selling like this i mean i even read you know you told well, heather this is no longer a SaaS company it's a no. It's a DAS company, you know, it's just it's a the business. data. 
explain yeah. this pivot to me because this I well, was like, you know I, I, as, I, as we uh as we were ramping up you know we were hiring and we were on linkedin all the time it's like you know look at this thing everybody does one resume and then all the systems the recruiting systems the hr management systems they subscribe to this api i mean we use it for free but you know, even this, the, the industrial systems, you know, they make a billion dollars a year, just systems reading instead of each one keeping a PDF or a Word document that's, you know, oh, I've changed my resume, please update, you know, that, you know, I was like, why do we have this for healthcare? You know, let's build our components back when we were doing components so that the data flows into them if it can be found. And what we found is that our the, th the, the companies that were going to be our competitors, you know, we were going to beat them because they didn't have it. But then we would only win, we would only have it for the people that we beat the competitor. And why? Why not? If no one has this, why don't we make it available to everyone? Like LinkedIn. Uh, and boy, it was a lot easier to be helping everybody than to be try to scratch their eyes out. Um, and so we've you know, begun, we, we basically purchased mostly through resellers now. So we're really excited about Canvas and healthy inhalation. And hopefully during the course of the year, we'll add a few more EHRs and CRMs. And those companies now have the ability when you look up a patient, instead of seeing whatever only you typed about the patient, you know, oh my God, you have cancer. Oh, that's right. I typed that you had cancer. You know, you can actually see what every other doctor has seen and done about you, whatever other lab, whatever other pharmacy. It's, it's a complete picture of a patient uh, inside of all these different products. And uh, it's, it cuts us down to the really hard thing, which is we've never federated medical record data for lots of good reasons. And uh, and we're just living on that problem. Let's create a single living, breathing, reliable, consistent, trustworthy, living, breathing, always updating LinkedIn profile for everybody's medical record. Okay, how possible is that? Because so what I'm hearing, like this is one of those I hope things it's a little that... bit possible, otherwise oh I gotta give back $20 like, million. Seriously. Well, I've got to ask, I've got to ask, I, you know, so it's like, I, I keep looking at, you know, I keep talking to startups, I keep talking to folks in provider orgs, you know, about 21st century cures and the data sharing, you know, yeah. rules that that put in place. And what I'm hearing is that there's a lot of people, payers and providers alike, who are not participating and they're like, fine, what well, fine, I don't care. So I mean, well, what do you think? Like, what's going on? Can you give us a beat on that? Because this sounds yeah. pretty critical to Zeus scaling up is having access yeah. to more and more data. We do think that this is the exact right time to start Zeus, partly because there are these laws that are simply not being, it's like Russia laws, like what law? What are you talking about? My car, you know, what do you mean cures? Who cares? I don't give you, so what? You know, like what? You're a nonprofit hospital. What do you mean you don't give me, so what? That's crazy, but it's true. They, they're simply not participating. Someday, maybe somebody gets some leverage on them and they do. The good news is they are participating in HIPAA. So Mickey Tripathi said in a speech recently, you know, we do 47 million HIPAA transactions, CCDs, you know, EMR records going from one provider to another every month. That's more than Fed wires, uh, except for maybe when Silicon Bank was on fire. But um, but most of the time, you know, th that's evidence of maturity. Uh, so there is now the common practice of exchange. There are now national providers. So they, they can't be gobbled up by the local hospital monopoly, right? CVS Minute Clinic is not going to be goggled up by, you know, Mass General or Maine Health or whatever, but they're, but Maine Health and Mass General is going to want to connect to them and to Firefly Health and to RIA Health and, to, you know, all these marvelous, you know, One Medical, Amazon, uh, and on and on, Privia. Um, I don't want to leave anybody out. I'm like the Academy Awards. And, um, Kissing babies so and shaking that hands. created an environment where, like, we're not done yet. It's not too late to build this, but there's a good foundation. The other thing that's true today is we've got a really solid generation of people who've come into tech to to healthcare that are used to writing technology in the modern way. Everywhere outside of healthcare, code products are built with components. You grab, you don't build a database. You just grab one from AWS. You don't build an interface to 600 banks, you just grab the Stripe API, right? The idea of that is now acceptable and easy. So the idea that there might be a seven line 
code, you know, Stripe that you can grab and drop in and suddenly you've got somebody's chart from everywhere they've ever been is an accepted, almost expected idea, even though it doesn't exist yet, except for Zeus. So I feel like you you bring up, you know, there's this obvious gaps, like gaping, embarrassing Soviet era gaps, but there's enough traction and momentum that the next guy in will close the gap, I think. Okay. I'm hopeful. I mean, I feel like I've been hearing you talk about interoperability for as long as I've been long in this industry. Yeah, I did yeah. not think we'd ever be back here. <laughs> and I think there's something different about interoperability. Like you talk to you and you talk to you and you talk to you and you talk to me and I keep a record and you keep a record. This idea that we all just subscribe to one fountain that's really well documented and really mature, and really reliable and doesn't overwrite, you know, when when we get a record from you know Jess Damasa, there's there might be six points. There are in fact on average six six point six copies that we found of each person. We don't merge those. We leave them separate. So you can see, hey, five doctors think Jessica's uh, B positive, and one guy thinks she's O negative. You decide, but we're making sure that that record nobody's trust is violated by by munging it. Um, it. That's a ton of work, a ton of compute, a ton of informatics. But once it's reliable and you build some good summarization on top, so you don't have to waste your time going through this stuff, um, there's real interest in it. Well, yeah, absolutely. I feel like the, the single patient record, you know, single source of truth has been like the thing in the industry for a really long time. And the key here is we we will offer you a source of truth if you want. Like uh, we, you could say, hey, Zeus, tell me what the gold, tell me what you think Jess's blood type is. But what we don't do is force it. We say, here's everything that's there, summarized into a tweet, into a glance. You can see it quickly and easily. And then you decide what you're going to go. You're still in charge of the information you go forward with. Um, and okay. that has been a lot of work. It basically means we got to keep all those instances current and living and breathing and, and fresh um, all the time. And then the layer that you look at is this summarization level that we're that we are making that's separate from the data. Um, and that's, you know, that's unique. That's never been done before. It involves keeping and holding and storing a copy, a little pigeonhole for every American. Um, but it's, it's, I think it's the, you know, I don't know what it was that made the 20 second browser, you know, Google be the one that we all started using, but I think something about keeping that data that way and then summarizing it, well, m maybe we get to be the 20 second, you know, HIE that works. <laughs> All right, I have to ask you this. <laughs> I want to talk about the market in addition, and, and you know, Zeus in this context here, you know, we opened it on talking about how how easy it was to fundraise in this climate. But you know, I'm curious, you know, one of the things I read as I was prepping to talk to you was your end of the year 2022 blog over on the Zeus website, where you're talking about, you know, how the proof that's going to be the, the proof in the pudding is changing. No longer is it going to be member growth rate. Now it's got to be rock hard cost savings for healthcare organizations. Yes. Say a little bit more about that i'm curious do you think like that's been one of the issues with health tech or digital health you know all along here is that we haven't quite been able to prove at scale those cost savings yeah and then how do you think that translates into the you know the corner of the health tech market that zeus is in so everything has a season and uh you know turn, turn. <laughs> uh, outrageous optimism and sloppy invention was a wonderful season uh and we all enjoyed it uh, but in order for those inventions to take hold and dig in, uh, you know, we have to have a sort of a season of slaughter. <laughs> and uh, and and the thing that sort of separates the wheat from the chaff, the dead from the living will be cash, will be, does your product yield in a short period of time, six months or less, more cash for those who use it than those who don't? Um, all of the products, all of the companies, all the digital health, all the focus factories, have that as a notion, but they haven't had to make it actually do that in cash right now. Um, and I think that's that's very healthy. That's very healthy. And there'll be some, you know, beautiful companies for which that is not true that we would really emotionally want to have live that will die. And that will be too bad. But the larger benefit, the sort of public health benefit of taking out the sort of some babies with the bathwater, but getting that dirty bathwater out will be will be beneficial to us, uh, as I said in the memo on www.suicell.com.
Yes, a fantastic read for all of those who are, are interested in checking that out. All right, so wrap up for me, like on market sentiment, like generally speaking, like what do you think is going to happen? Like the you know, Silicon Valley Bank goes down. That's a shock to the system. Already we're in like this cooling investment climate. You know, already we're seeing, you know, right down taken of, you know, Teledox acquisition of Lavongo, which kind of was like <gasps> everybody collectively gasped not once but twice. I mean, so, you know, what do you think is kind is ahead as far as the, you know, you, you invest in companies yourself. I mean, talk about, talk to no. me from that perspective. You know, what do you think is going to happen moving forward? Are we kind of in this era of just like, let's see where that bathwater with some of those babies go? Let's wait it out. Like, what do you what yeah. do you do? Well, uh, you know, the nice thing about these these seasons of slaughter is the really solid ones get some room to move. You know, when nobody has to break even, when nobody has to, you know, then they all look alike. What's the difference? You know, I'm I'm I'll give you an example. Direct primary care is everywhere. Everyone's doing it. You know, I happen to believe that companies like Firefly, who have built a stack from scratch, don't have any offices, don't have any overhead, you know, are really purely digital first, but control the whole stack, you know, the specialist referrals, the surgeries, the whole thing are going to win. It's going to be easier for them to win if, frankly, people start bleeding out and get out of the way. Um, and, 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 that, and, and the customers are like, you said this would be cheaper. Like, where's that money? You know, where where's the medical loss ratio reduction? Um, so I think that's the kind of thing that will happen. And a lot of the really beautiful feature rich things that don't quite box the circle, circle the square, close the loop, whatever it is, you know, they'll go away um, or they'll get bought by people who can turn it into something that earned. That's another thing we'll see is a lot of nice consolidation. All right. We're in like a new era of more disruption, please. Yeah, you know, a little <laughs> um, more destruction, please. You know, oh, there you go. <laughs> let, let's let's burn some of this extra chaff down so we can see and move. Um, and uh, and that'll be sad, but but uh, the, you know, death is the key precursor to life. Okay, fair enough. All right, last thing for you then. Rest of 2023, what's ahead for Zeus? I keep hearing some big talk like Athena, who's your daddy? out there. So like, what's going on? <laughs> well, so much for our plans for a great partnership with Athena. Thanks to you. <laughs> Who's uh, saying that? Uh, I wonder. <laughs> obviously, we're huge. We at Zeus are huge fans of Athena and hope to work with them a lot. Um, but the goal is really to, we now have, you know, three years of life in us, even if we don't sell anything, hopefully we will sell something. Uh, we, we really want to increase the performance of the zap the zap is the zeus aggregator profile it's that widget that you That's see that single record yeah and uh so today there's you know the, the government back in the obamacare days or the high tech act days that the world sort of defied decided there were 18 elements in an official chart today only seven elements of that chart are even in beta in the zap when you look at it the data is in there but you don't see it in a beautifully summarized way so it's not that helpful yeah. um the goal is to get through those 18 components and have them all be summarized and have all the missing codes and loink widgets, you know, cleaned up and populated and visible in a nice uh, glance-like view. That's our big goal. Maybe we add a few more EMR partners during the year. That would be amazing. We're obviously, you know, we're out there asking them all uh, and 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 you know, promising them that they will make more cash if they can build uh, their product on an always on all care record, as opposed to a only current with whatever you typed in record. Um, so that's that would be great to have, but essential is to get those, those, those 18 elements fresh and powerful and visible in the components that we've got in the partners that we've got. Awesome. Well, Jonathan, we wish you nothing but the best of luck. Can't wait to see what Same happens. Same here, I'm so glad to get time on your show again. Oh my goodness. Yeah. You, you can come back and weigh in whenever you'd like. I'm just, as with anybody else, but yeah. Well, I will set, set to work making something newsworthy so I can earn the, the airtime again. Well, in the meantime, this funding round, congratulations on it. Thank you for dropping by and telling us all about it and also explaining to us a little bit more about what's happening behind the scenes at Zeus. I mean, I'm interested to hear that, that you guys have switched your model a little bit and that the value proposition has changed. So we'll have to keep our eye on that. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. 
All right, we'll talk to you soon. For more interviews with the who's who of health tech as they are changing the way that we do healthcare, head on over to my YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash WTF Health. We'll talk to you guys real soon. Thanks again, Jonathan. Bye. You're welcome, Jessica. Thank you. <laughs>